As strange as it might seem, the title of this video is not misleading. There is a very real chance that microscopic fragments of dinosaur bones could actually be found on Earth's moon, the very same celestial body that Neil Armstrong first set foot on in the summer of 1969. However, we'll be the first to disappoint you. This doesn't mean that the dinosaurs managed to build rockets to the stars, setting up space-age civilizations on other worlds. The reality, as we will be examining in today's video, is rooted in the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period, the catastrophic event that took place 66 million years ago that marked a definite and violent end to the non-avian dinosaurs. So, in today's video, we will be examining a series of chance happenings, the destruction of the dinosaurs, the possible presence of their remains on the moon, and how they managed to get there in the first place. Along the way, we will take a look at other unexplained objects that have appeared on the surface of the moon, reinforcing that the presence of dinosaur bones up there may not be as strange as you might think. Sit back and relax as we explore these possibilities and more. While the dinosaur-related hypotheses are a thing of recent times, the notion that material from Earth could be situated on the moon can be traced back to 1971, just two years after the first human beings landed on that once unreachable body. Astronauts aboard the Apollo 14, the third craft to successfully land on the moon, noted a strange occurrence in the geology of the Fra Moro Formation in which they settled. The formation, associated with the Fra Moro Crater, a heavily worn down remnant of a great lunar plane, is situated on the side of the moon closest to Earth, and thus was a logical landing point for the first astronauts to explore the heavens. The astronauts surveying the landscape of this section of the moon were lucky enough to note the presence of rocks that had originated from planet Earth. Four billion year old pieces of granite that were ripped from the surface of the Earth when an asteroid collided with our planet, long before true life had ever evolved. The rocks hurled into the Earth's atmosphere by the impact of the stray asteroid had found themselves landing by chance on our moon. Four billion years later, they remained. Now the asteroid that struck the Earth four billion years ago would have hit a world entirely covered by a huge ocean, not one that contained a multitude of spectacular dinosaur species. At the time of the asteroid hit, the only semblance of what might be considered the origins of life could be found in the presence of prebiotics, microscopic organic molecules that would have been entirely invisible to the naked eye. There is an almost inconceivably massive time difference between this asteroid and even the earliest vertebrates, let alone dinosaurs. The dinosaurs first evolved on Earth around 245 million years ago and are a relatively speaking baby step in terms of the geological timescale of planet Earth. As different as the world may have been when this early asteroid plowed into it, the same principle is thought to have been the reason behind the theory of dinosaur bone fragments on the moon. The science behind the theory is exactly the same. The theory is as follows. The asteroid that played a major part in wiping out the non-avian dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous period, otherwise known as the Chicxulub asteroid, named for the Ground Zero site in the Gulf of Mexico, slammed into the Earth, an impact whose kinetic energy is comparable to 72 teratons of TNT. The asteroid was eight and a half miles wide and is thought to have struck the Earth whilst traveling at a speed of 27,000 miles per hour, 
generating wind speeds on the surface of the Earth in excess of 1,000 miles per hour. It smashed a hole in the side of the planet, some 100 kilometers wide and 30 kilometers deep. Such an impact is not only going to have repercussions for the Earth itself, but for the atmosphere around it. As the asteroid enters Earth's atmosphere, it creates a hole, displacing the air and replacing it with a vacuum of outer space. The displaced air particles would then travel back to fill in the newly created void, heaving massive quantities of Earth rocks up into the atmosphere as they did so. These rocks, no longer confined by the force of gravity, began to drift into Earth's orbit. While some of these rocks remained drifting through the atmosphere, a number of them would have found their way into eventually colliding with the Moon. A great number, in fact. The Moon is a very large presence in the atmosphere of planet Earth, and such an event would likely result in many rocks, or fragments of rocks from planet Earth, remaining there for millennia to come. It is not out of the question that, within the rocks that were ejected from our planet, there lay something else. Bones, remains, impressions, even animals that had died in relatively recent times, were potentially launched up into the atmosphere, some of which may currently, as you watch this video, be embedded up there in the lunar rocks. Before we progress, let's take a moment to take a quick look at what the asteroid impact might have looked like for a helpless dinosaur watching a colossal ball of light hurtle across the late Cretaceous night sky. As the light drew eerily closer, winds would have picked up, uprooting trees from the ground and whirling dinosaurs, even colossal ones, into the air spelling the end of millions of lives. Upon the impact of the asteroid plowing into the side of planet Earth, a huge crater would have formed, and the rocks that were tossed into the atmosphere towards the moon would have left the Earth within seconds of the impact. The force of the asteroid, combined with the super-fast winds and the location of the asteroid in the middle of the sea, would have sent forth mighty tidal waves, ones that would wash over the land, destroying entire ecosystems in the process. Where water did not reach, fire did. Wildfires as well as comets raining down on the land would have taken many more lives. The smoke from which would have engulfed the land, choking the plants and animals into oblivion. Eventually, the fires would have died down, from which sprung a period of intense cold. The dinosaurs were unequipped to deal with such a drastic change in climate, and eventually began to thin out. Ash and dust blocked out the sun, which prevented many plants from growing across the land. This made it difficult for large herbivores, such as the sauropods and ceratopsians, to find food, and as such, they began to disappear. This at first would have provided a feast for the theropods. With so many fresh carcasses littering the landscape, they could dig in at will. This would not last, however. Eventually, with no herbivores left, the carnivores were left without anything to eat and they too met a grisly end at the hands of starvation. It was a brutal cycle that only those adapted enough to deal with intense change could cope with. We can see all the results firsthand. Today, all of the mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and invertebrates are descended from stock that survived one of the worst days in the history of the planet. We are descended from the mere 20% of all life that managed to pull through.
Now, considering that fossils of dinosaurs have not concretely been excavated and secured up on the moon as of yet, this is a near impossible question to answer. However, educated assumptions can be made. It is unlikely that any dinosaurs alive at the time of the Chicxulub impact would have fossilized on the moon. So this may rule out many of the famous North American animals, such as Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. Excluded too would be the likes of Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, Dakotaraptor, and Alamosaurus, dinosaurs that lived in what is now referred to as the Hell Creek Formation of Wyoming and Montana. Across Asia, many large species of titanosaur would have remained earthbound, along with the last large carnivores of Africa, such as Majungasaurus. The vast majority of rocks that ended up on the moon may have been North American or South American in origin, and would have likely been composed of animals that had been dead for millions of years before the asteroid struck, this raises the possibility that the fragments of dinosaurs on the moon could belong to some of the most iconic animals of the Jurassic. The North American Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, Brachiosaurus, or Diplodocus, for example. Go back even earlier, and rocks from South America show us the presence of some of the very first dinosaurs. Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus, for instance two lithe, agile carnivores that lived in the Triassic. Now, this is all speculation, of course, but these are just a few possibilities. Alongside these dinosaurs lived flourishing ecosystems of hundreds upon hundreds of creatures, all of which are lost to the annals of prehistory. Giant amphibians, terrestrial crocodilians, early birds, pterosaurs and huge marine reptiles join the dinosaurs on their evolutionary journey. There is just as much chance that these animals' remains could be sharing the lunar plains with the giants of the Jurassic right now. As strange as it might seem, dinosaurs are not the only non-naturally occurring features of the moon. Over the years, multiple objects have either been left there by astronauts or stumbled upon by chance through both telescopes and expeditions. The moon is a relatively unknown space in the heavens even after multiple expeditions to it. There is a lot left to learn about this spectacular celestial body, so there is no surprise then that it keeps raising questions. Take the so-called Archimedes platform, for example. A large bottle-shaped structure five miles long and one mile wide, first spotted on the lunar orbiter during the Apollo missions. Conspiracy theorists and lunar enthusiasts alike have been debating this topic for years. On one of the photos, a seemingly irregular structure can be seen which some people think resembles a platform of some kind. Other photographs show what can be interpreted as a spire of sorts, a spiraling structure obelisk-like in shape, jutting out skyward from the base of the moon. Other theories have surrounded the presence of strange lights spotted on the surface of the moon, but these have often been dubbed the results of lens flares in photographs taken by astronauts. Many of these more bizarre sightings are the work of conspiracy theorists and hold little weight. But some strange objects are indeed up there, left by astronauts who have visited the moon over the years. Amidst the vast lunar plains, celestial mountains and deep craters lie a series of objects that, without context, seem to have no place on the moon. Golf balls, pieces of commemorative art, the feather of a falcon, several photographs, 
pairs of boots, and even 96 bags of human waste left by astronauts of the Apollo missions. Some of these items were props used in experiments, some of them were sent up as novelty items, and some were the necessary byproducts of the expeditions. As we said, there is a lot left to learn about the moon, despite the fact that it has been intensively studied over the years. So there you have it. It is likely that there are microscopic fragments of dinosaur bones embedded within millions of years old rocks on the moon. While this does not mean that there will be an intact, complete sauropod skeleton waiting to be excavated beneath the lunar plains, it is still remarkable that animals that would have once looked up at the moon, in presumably complete ambivalence, found fragments of themselves resting for all eternity in the moon of planet Earth. Who knows? In time, perhaps, we will come to learn more about the specific dinosaur fragments that are up there, revealing exactly which rocks were cast into the heavens that terrible night.